Good evening. Uh, my name is Rob Williams, and I have spent, I live in the Mad River Valley. Uh, for 10 years, I have spent uh, time exploring why and how Vermont might peaceably secede from the United States and reinvent itself as an independent republic. Publishing Vermont Commons for many years, news, newspaper, and now 2vr.org on the sticker, uh, and uh, this book here. Uh, secession, secession, really? Before I answer yes, consider the dirtiest word in US politics. In universal terms, secession refers to a smaller group of citizens choosing to detach themselves from a larger political group. In US history, secession is as American as baseball, apple pie, and Chevys. When I say secession, you probably think maybe the Civil War, states' rights, racism, the South. Our selective memory has all but erased secession from the American mindset, even though secession was a fundamental part of the US political fabric for 100 years. Our founders embedded secession in the Declaration of Independence. Dissolve is the key action verb, as in dissolving the political bonds between England and the 13 colonies. The Revolution of 76 was a successful secession strategy to cut loose the forward-thinking British colonies from a corrupt, aggressive, and bloated Britain. Corrupt, aggressive, bloated. Sound familiar? Vermonters bleed independence. During the American Revolution, Vermonters ran Vermont as an independent country, authoring their own constitution, coining their own money and bank, establishing their own post office, and running their own affairs, only joining the US as the 14th state in 1791 when it made sense. Like all other New England states, Vermonters supported secession at the 1814 Hartford Convention, arguing that the US was becoming too aggressive and militaristic. So, Vermont and New England championed secession as bedrock constitutional principle long before the South used secession to justify race-based slavery and so-called states' rights. Republican President Abraham Lincoln, shrewd prosecution of the Civil War and his radical reinvention of the US Constitution, federal power trumping the states, put the question of nonviolent secession to bed in the United States for 150 years swept it under our national rug of memory and history until now. So why secession now? Why Vermont? Three reasons. First, it is clear that the United States is no longer a republic serving its citizens, but an empire owned and operated by Wall Street. Let's be honest. No one party, platform, person, or program will ever be capable of fixing the United States of empire. Not even Bernie, no bullshit Sanders. Second, we face a unique global crisis unprecedented in human history. Climate change and peak oil realities are threatening not only our oil-powered global economy, but human life on our planet. The best way forward is to decentralize civilization as quickly as we can, to do more with less. Third, Vermont is the only one of 50 states to once exist as its own republic, and a place that enjoys a long history of both self-reliance and communitarianism. Freedom and unity is our motto. And we know that Vermonters are good at rolling up their sleeves. Look at our progressive history, our town meeting democratic tradition, and our small is beautiful entrepreneurial spirit. So how can Vermont move towards 21st century independence? Secession, political independence, falls at the far end of a spectrum of actionable activities already underway. We've published a whole book with the blueprints, but here are three ways we can start to make Vermont independence a reality. Number one, financial independence. The US is pursuing a policy of full spectrum dominance, militarized control of the entire planet through aggressive sequential war making. More than 150 countries are networked by 1,000 US military bases, we think. The whole global operation is financed by a debt-driven petrodollar economy that is unethical, economically destructive, and unsustainable. The solution, part of it, modeled after the highly successful Bank of North Dakota would be a Vermont public bank, which would create new jobs, stimulate investment, and save Vermonters millions of dollars every year in non-interest payments to out-of-country big banks like Canada's TD. Second part of the solution is fuel independence. The world is currently burning 90 million barrels of oil per day, 23 million barrels here in the US, 
with the Pentagon burning more than one million barrels a day. All the world's energy experts agree the fossil fuel energy economy's days are numbered, and fracking our way to oblivion is a recipe for disaster. UVM students protesting in DC last year, the Keystone XL. The solution, of course, is to harvest more of our own energy here in Vermont. We've successfully shut down Vermont Yankee. Burlington is the first city in the United States to enjoy a 100% renewable electrical grid. And Vermont homes and businesses are aggressively building out solar, wind, and biomass energy projects. May it continue. Number three, food independence. Everybody's favorite because fresh local food and drink tastes so good. Most Vermonters understand that corporate commercial food interests are consolidating food production. The political power of the food lobby is impressive, but then again, so is the growing power of Vermonters. The solution here is, of course, Vermont must grow their own. Let's take the idea of a diversified working landscape seriously, reclaim thousands of acres of abandoned dairy farmland, and put our land back to productive use. We are the Napa Valley of beer. Our local wine industry is bubbling. We create one-third of the world's syrup supply and our local produce, cheese, and ice cream are legendary. While we're at it, Vermont should legalize hemp production and leverage the productive power of one of the world's most amazing crops, ditto pot. Let's legalize cannabis, focusing on multiple bottom lines, social, economic, environmental. Common sense commerce, a Vermont way that blends our emphasis on individual freedom with communitarian values. And finally, Vermont independence should be fun. As Ben and Jerry are fond of saying, if it's not fun, why do it? We want singing, dancing, festivals, parties. A revolution without dancing is a revolution not worth having. Let me end with the words of Vermonter Calvin Coolidge. I love Vermont because of her hills and valleys, her scenery and invigorating climate, but most of all because of her indomitable people. They are a race of pioneers. If the spirit of liberty should vanish in other parts of the Union and support of our institutions should languish, it could all be replenished from the generous store he held by the people of this brave little state of Vermont, or perhaps our brave little once and future Republic of Vermont. Thank you. Thank you.